um okay so uh so today uh i was hoping that we will do uh some work starting with uh excel and i mean by excel i mean spreadsheet we will probably use google spreadsheet and then you will try to replicate that same thing with python and uh, on the way we will probably uh, learn a couple of useful things is what i was hoping uh, i would really love it if uh, uh, if as many people as possible can kind of talk in between uh, in the sense uh, i'll tell you the reason why uh, just let me open up share my screen <clears throat> Uh, so yeah not for checking connectivity so i was hoping we can uh, write some uh, fancy uh, uh, sheet spreadsheet so we need uh, we need to have some dummy data right uh, to do some spreadsheet based processing so uh, i know many of you do research with uh, spreadsheet data savinita juda you both uh, have been showing spreadsheet based stuff so uh, can you like uh, <clears throat> give me some columns so three columns i do need is first name middle name and last name this is just for uh, for me to show something that i thought i will show but then can you also like give me some column suggestions so we could probably do some formula on that Hey, uh, even uh, Darren did some nice uh, Excel spreadsheet recently. I helped him out. You can ask Darren also. I mean, there was more Juda than me, but yeah. <laughs> I've added okay. agent. Jen. Monthly family income. Married or unmarried. Uh, actually do we also have to do the same spreadsheet or it's just your taking the lead uh, no no need we, you can all use the same the thing i will uh, try to increase the size oh. okay okay uh, this is better yeah it's a 200% okay so uh, for now i think these many columns are good enough now i need some content so i'll start with my name so that uh who wants to volunteer their names we'll fill these other columns later for now let's use these columns you can use mine adarsh so i'm just going to write adarsh Not let's write it like that. We need a. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Jude, you said yours. Is that true? Yes. Uh, am I getting your spelling correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's just uh, start with these for now. I'm going to put others. to that should have for a particular reason uh does anyone have only uh last name like only two names savinita so do you want a volunteer and name yeah yeah so savinita prakash 
So yeah, that will be useful. And uh, I'm gonna put Adarsh ka name like this. Okay. Okay. I think these are uh, good enough for now. So uh, the reason I wanted to put this is uh, in Telegram, if you sign up um, with and you do not upload a photo, you will typically see uh, the initials becoming your uh, uh, profile picture by default. I don't know if you notice that. Uh -huh. Probably you've noticed. Anyhow, uh, now the question is: so I want. But, but it's only two letters, it. right? It's only first and last. Uh, it's only first and last, correct? But let's say for this uh, particular exercise, we are using as many initials as we have. Okay, so we would want this column to be like this. Now, of course, I did this manually now. Uh, for the first uh, five minutes, let's try to do this um, by formula. I, I just wanted to say one random thing. Like I just had a look at the Telegram, some of my uh, contacts, and uh, even though some of them had like you know say like send the like SS, the initials were SS. I some the the initials are coming as like S zero. So maybe it's because uh, you know they entered their full name as just the first name. <laughs> okay, let's not fix Telegram bug now. Uh, yes, I I, uh, uh, I let's think about that later. Now uh, this question uh, before uh, oh, okay actually I did some uh, I had planned something else to begin with. Let's just say I want full name here. How, how do we do that in Excel? I mean all spreadsheet with the formula i mean if, if you if you think you already know too much excel uh, maybe you don't have to answer this we can give a chance to someone who doesn't speak a lot in the sessions what do i write here such that i get this column as akshay astinish like that You put is equal to and then enter the name of the cells A2 plus B2 plus C2. Okay, right. Like this. Yeah. Plus C2. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe a bracket around that if the bracket helps. Because. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, this function works for numericals, no, not alphabetical words. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe rather than adding plus, you add it within uh, a double inverted commas, so that since it's a string and it's not numerical, but but then yeah, how would you put it together? Yeah, maybe comma. Yeah, S space by instead of a plus, maybe a comma. Okay, one one second. Before uh, that, you you mentioned uh, was it Vaishnavi who said uh, this function works for numericals, not for text. Can you can yes. you like uh, can you tell once more as in what what is that difference? Uh, what did you mean by that? Numericals are other number inputs. Like if you are entering any number of like nine or sixty eight or something. Uh, strings are uh, strings or text are like the word input. So as far as I have worked, yeah, see, it works for numericals. It doesn't work for words because they, uh, Excel doesn't recognize that value. Hmm. So uh, is there a way to uh, how does Excel know this is a numerical and this is not a numerical? If I write uh, A here, doesn't work. It should be a number. Even if you write like a, uh, even if you write, I think decimal number, it it then doesn't also work. I guess. 
I don't know. Everything it depends on the cell. Like you can usually right click on a cell on Excel okay. and then you can give it a type. Like if it's a value, like how to read that cell. So you tell the program to like know which sort of data it is. So you're saying I should go to format and say this is a text. If I, if I say this is plain text, will it will it stop working? Huh? I'm not, not sure. I, I don't know what will happen. It put everything on the left side, but it's still saying 189. Okay. Shall I make it date? Let's see what happens. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. What happened now? Wait, can you just undo it? I, I want to see the numbers before this. Okay, and now redo. It's a shortcut control way. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't okay. make sense. <laughs> so, uh, can we all agree that Excel is doing some magic? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, and we also got this idea that, okay, there is there are there are a different ways to treat, although it's all written in one particular cell with keyboard, we can treat uh, something like a number and something like text and something like a date. Yeah. The, let's just keep that in mind. Uh, we, we are going to use that later on. For now, I'll just delete all that. Now let's come back to this. So you were saying, Darren, we should put a comma. Uh, yeah. And remove plus. Like that. Say error. Can you remove the bracket and see? Or how about uh, double uh, quotes? Yeah, inverted quotes. Where? Around each cell name and uh, yeah. take off the com. Uh, take off the co take off the comma and add uh, plus signs, or, or just just leave it. Okay, yeah, take the, add the plus signs. Yeah, no, okay. Okay, so uh, one thing is uh, uh, for text, you can use uh, instead of plus, they use the character called and. So, uh, so let me do this one second. Uh, if I had uh, hello and 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 world, it would put as hello world. Yeah. So now, can you maybe try guessing? So cell names then and. Like that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And saying suggested autofill, I'm just going to say yeah. This is fine? Uh, no, we need space in between. Mm hmm. So maybe, so, so maybe you can put inverted commas between the and, like, uh, and in that inverted comma, leave maybe a space. Is this space enough? I put space between A3 and no, 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 you have to put it within inverted form. Yeah, that's so that didn't work. Um, so I'm gonna say like that. Is that enough? And the and before that. An and, yeah, and an and before that. Yeah. And after Like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now one question: When you say uh, the name of the cell, what did you mean? Uh, uh, this A five or A two, A three? Uh, yeah. Can you, why did you choose the name of the cell to call it? 
because the name of the cell is its unique identity and uh, like it's a location in the excel sheet and that's unique to it so anything can be placed in that location but the location uh, the address of the location does not change nice so that particular concept also wherein you're not calling this akshay you you want whatever is in this particular location in a2 and you're referring that as part of your formula instead of writing akshay you're writing a2 that uh, also we need to keep in mind so that essentially this is what a variable is right uh, whatever what the content of a2 might change it could become ajay this is my brother's name but uh, the formula still refers to what is inside a2 and therefore it becomes uh, i mean the the result is what we expected so the that particular point about variables so that's what a variable is let's just keep that in mind earlier we were looking at something called data type so this is number this is text this is uh, date so we were looking at data data types and now we are looking at uh, variables so this is what a variable is a2 b2 and c2 and then here what we added is a constant uh, so in in uh, we we have added a space character here right but we put an inverted comma around it what would have happened if i didn't put that inverted comma can i remove this inverted comma if i press enter now what will i get there won't be space between Akshay and S. Wait. So you're saying that in the cells you added a space at the end of the name, right? No, I didn't add uh, any space. I changed the formula. Uh, I removed the inverted comma around the space. So you're saying there are two ands now. Hmm. I don't think it'll work. I did say error. So. Uh, so all i all i wanted to say was this is just uh, the inverted comma is just telling the computer we didn't mean a space like to make the things more clear it's just that we actually want a space character so um, again this also will become useful later on when we are doing some of our other things now now let's come to this initials uh, how do we get to get to this is there any formula for that Uh, if it's a string in the first uh, letter of the string, if there's any function like that in Excel. Yeah, is there any function like that in Excel? Google spreadsheet, huh? So this one says something like split, split string into three parts based on the space and use the left function. First let. So it says we can use the left function. Shall I try that? What would the I'm gonna try A2, okay? Yeah, is, is is that going to be useful, Judah? Yes. How? Oh? So now we have the uh, first initial of the first cell. So we use that to concatenate the rest of the cells. Like we need a function to add uh, the left of that cell plus the left of the B cell plus C cell, like that. Like that. Yeah. Um, hold on. Uh, obviously, the plus. I don't think the plus will work. 
you can uh, there's another function called the concatenate function so you can uh... okay now you're bringing okay never mind just just add the i suppose the and just just add the and instead of the plus you want concatenate no need no need just add the and instead of the plus okay you anyhow i add, use concatenate uh, we set a problem or is it fine fine okay that's fine so uh, uh, will this work for all the cells it may not work for others va because his uh, like all of the initials are in the first cell hmm fine let's take a pause here so what did we uh, what did we do uh, there are a few things we did right uh, what is his left Uh, Judah, you said uh, use left, right? Can you explain what left is? I did, I didn't see use left. You checked the uh, you checked on Google. Yes, but then you uh, you told us how to use it for the <laughs> other one, so you understood what it does. Right. So what is it doing? So, so basically, uh, you're entering a string in a cell. so a string is basically uh, you using characters like letters or anything and that is that is being coded by you know some ascii or some unicode or something like that so now each uh, we are saying we want some number of characters from the first character to some specified character so left i think will just take the first character of that string and uh, give you that first letter Makes sense. So uh, we can even try. I think. See, it will give us two characters if we want. Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Actually, just one small doubt. If you add zero, if you put zero instead of one, what happens? Like, what is it? What is it? What number does it start from? Zero. Zero everywhere. It became nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, so what we have essentially left is a function. Now, this is what uh, this is where the word function comes in, right? We we looked at uh, data types, we looked at uh, variables, and then th this is the other one called left a uh, function. now of what a function does is it takes some input so if you give left a word like akshay it will give you an answer an output called uh, what is the output here for left one it will be a okay so i'm going to put uh, comma one it's is going to be a right so you give it uh, a different output it can produce a different result something like that yeah the, the, so the, so this is what a function does it takes some input and gives us some output um now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to assume that we are comfortable doing this in excel if any one of you are not comfortable just let me know and then switch to doing this with programming within excel so here we have problem with others also right we haven't been able to get a b a here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert one more column Okay, just uh, one thing. What does concatenate uh, function do here? Hmm. So, what is concatenate doing? Shall we try some concatenate? I'm gonna pass it a case and it's a y. What did it do? So, uh, 
uh, it's the same as like when we were trying with uh, that full name function uh, formula, right? Correct. That's true, right? Can we replace this formula with the concatenate? Yes. How would that be? Uh, concatenate and then brackets. And you remove the ands. Oh, but space. Well, leave the space or? Yeah, yeah, probably leave the space. So this is a variable, A2 is a variable, space is a character, B2 is another variable, space is a character, C2 is a variable, but they're all string, there's no number involved. So I think concatenate will work. So I made it concatenate, it's working. Yeah. What if I add a number here? Can I change this to a number? Will it work? It is all, it did something. all numbers are strings also. <laughs> so yeah, I mean uh, Excel is doing its own magic. Uh, I mean spreadsheet is doing its own magic in some places. Uh, sometimes it converts a number to a string to a string a text and uh, that's that. So concatenate does uh, just uh, put things together. Uh, joins strings together or in 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 their own words it's app appends string to one another that's what it does now now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do the same uh, initial creation with uh, you may might have done this in the past so in excel we can do something called app script where uh, we are essentially going to do the same stuff with the program so we can create a custom function. Now, uh, how a custom function works is, can you see this uh, screen called function my function? Yeah. It uh, reminds me of captain or my captain. <laughs> function my function. Okay. So I'm just going to say return uh, hi here. Now, uh, forget about uh, the syntax of what I'm typing. But when I come back to this place and I type equal to my function, I'm gonna say loading for a while. Unless it has an error. I don't think it has. Yeah, so it, it ran that uh, uh, command. It ran that function and uh, returned the result here. So just like uh, we did concatenate or left or all that, uh, this function uh, we can now it has become an official function within the Google Sheets. That's that's the way uh, this app script works. OK, so I'm just going to show. Um, let's just rename this function. Let's call it uh, uh, demo. And uh, now this should of this fails because I changed the name, right? So I'm going to change the name to demo. And uh, it works again. Now I'm going to change it slightly. Just observe what I'm doing. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing. Uh, so instead of just being, uh, just taking no input, I'm going to say input cell. And I'm going to say return the input cell. Or uh, let's say input. Uh, I'm just going to call it input. I'm going to say return input. And here I'm going to say instead of just calling it like that, I'm going to pass it. Uh, let's pass it 
a2 okay and here a3 a4 a5 does that make sense can you can you tell me what is happening here i i wrote is equal to demo a2 here in g2 and i got akshay which is the content of a2 as a result and this is the form what's happening there you're typing in the text huh? i mean chat huh? no be uh, basically the you're saying that this is a function and the function is basically trying to do something uh, given some input so you are you're saying that the input is going to return the same thing like what you're going to put into it is going to give you the same thing and then uh, you're going to the excel and you're saying that uh, uh, take in the input as that given cell and uh, that same cell is coming in that place correct one uh, one small uh, difference probably is uh, what app script does is it will not pass a cell it will pass the content of the cell or uh, the variable value and uh, uh, it will return like that uh so that's why i could do this right so it will directly take a string or the content of the uh, so can, can you use the word variable is there a variable here is any of these uh, there are 1 2 3 4 5 words here right Uh, does any of it sound like a variable? No, I don't think so. There, because it's all constant, right? It's just taking that input, which is going to be whatever's there, uh, going to be there in the cell. It's going to put it back. You didn't put anything else. So, hmm. But the idea is that uh, anyone can add on the cell, and you can still get the same. Uh, you can get the new uh, fun output. so i can add a new cell and i think uh, the whole idea is that uh, that it's the idea of what you enter in a cell that is uh, variable samita do you agree with that yes yes so or where is a function here is there a function here which one is a function correct uh, was it adarsh ravi yeah so demo is a function input is the variable that it received and uh, let's uh, say and it returned the same now now i'm just going to do something but what what uh, type of inputs can it can it receive like for example when you put a2 it returned what was the variable like cell variable a2 as we discussed right so um what kind of inputs can it receive and how does it know, you know for example by this definition that a2 is the cell that we are going to have. so uh, so again uh, let's try to break that down by uh, trying out what uh, what the google spreadsheet does so when i change a2's value uh it is changing like that if i write is equal to demo random thing what do you think will happen what will happen when i press enter here i give that return random thing first thing random thing so whatever whatever the input is it will uh, show that it doesn't matter what the type is as, as long sense. as it so 
so how did it know that a2 is a variable but then random thing is nothing not a cell or anything like that i mean it should be in, embedded in the spreadsheet program. actually i think i think you have to explain uh, what a variable means and what are the types of data uh, before this so so uh, look at look at this so i wrote here is equal to demo random thing okay and there is no a2 there is no g2 nothing there right i i just write directly wrote a string or a text in that yeah yeah and what did i get back the same thing okay. yeah so uh, possibly what excel is doing or what spreadsheet is doing when i write is equal to demo a2 is it's not sending the the word a2 to the function it is probably taking the value of whatever is in a2 and just sending that to the function does that make sense yeah Yeah. So even if I write a two and b two, what would this be? It will concatenate, concatenate these two cell variables. I think, and have yeah. put that right. What so, happens if it's uh, different types of data? What should happen? So if you put them inverted comma a two, it will only return the string a two. Inverted comma. So demo um, inverted comma a two that will return. Yeah, just yeah. What will this return? Looks like just a two maybe. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what it is doing is. Uh, it's uh, taking whatever is the text in a2 it's passing it to the demo function and what uh, what the demo function says is whatever is the input just return that as the input what will it do if you give demo bracket random string without the inverted commas uh okay equal to demo Like that, yeah. What will happen? What is your hypothesis on what will happen? Error. Error. Huh. What? Yeah, I think I think it it will try to look for this variable which is not there, like random string variable, right? I yeah so I think there's a, there are two things happening here one is that uh, excel is automatically detecting you know data types but also you have this applet that I think requires specific assignment because input you haven't defined input so I think if you don't define input as a collector of strings or a collector of data then I think there'll be an error uh Okay. On the same line as what uh, Ravi was telling, if you were to put instead of random string, if you put a numeric value, right? Do we still get error or that? What do you think will happen? I think we I... shouldn't get an error. Yeah, we shouldn't. Yeah. Should not, yeah. I think we get nine. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try to break this function. How how do we break this? how do we make so i got 9 here right uh, i passed 9 and i got 9 now what can i write here such that i'll get an error here in 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 the sheet to get an error what should i write here return error <laughs> return error like that <laughs> yeah okay uh so it's all become error i only want this 9 to error 9 or you can i don't know how to write it uh, tell in programming language but you can describe what input would mean like if there is no uh, double quotes for the variable 
Akshay, what is your specific problem uh, statement? You're saying only if it's a nine or if it's any number. Any number, maybe. Maybe there's a way to specify, like some sort of a way to specify the input should be only a string and not a, a numerical variable. Correct. If, there, there should be a way to do that. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how to do that in JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do something called to uppercase. So what to uppercase does is it'll try to make everything capital. Okay. But the concept of capital doesn't exist for numbers, right? So I'm just going to assume this might fail. I haven't tried this ever. So I'm just going to save this and say, let's see what happens. Maybe it can ignore the numbers like nine will be nine, uppercase nine is uppercase, same nine, right? Rather yes, than defining error. Yeah. That makes sense now. You wanted to get an error only on numbers. That was the purpose, right? I, I guess so. But let's see what happened. So things have become capital. And uh, when we pass a number, the when we try to do this to uppercase, it didn't make sense. So there was an error. That kind of makes sense, right? In the sense, uh, if this is a string, it will work or a text, it will work. But if it's a number, it is showing error. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, here's uh, our original um, problem was to get initials, right? So I'm just gonna do, let's, let's delete uh, these parts. I'm just gonna introduce you to a few functions which will do this. Uh, so if I do, uh, let me uh, function demo inside demo. So uh, if I do uh, uh, input is equal to Akshay and I say input, let's see what this does. Okay, this uh, I'm gonna say. I'm just going to run this right here so we can see it right here. So you notice this Akshay here. If you are noticing carefully, you can tell me what happens when I do this. Now when I run, run this, what will the, uh, what will it say here? You saw the difference? Am I still connected? Whatever was in uh, inverted quotes. Yeah, so so here whatever I pass made, so I am essentially making input as Akshay, as Dinesh. I am saying log that. So ignore this logger dot log what it does, but basically I am saying in the log put put this as input. I mean, put the input in the log. Okay. Now I'm I'm gonna show a thing. Uh, const first letter. So I can do something like this. I have input, and I'm taking the first letter. Uh, based on what I've written, what do you think is gonna happen? When I hit run, it will print A, the first letter of the input. Yeah, let's verify that. It will print that. Uh, capital A specifically. Yeah. So uh, this this particular notation, the way where wrote this, 
it'll take the first letter out of it or the zeroth letter out of it and uh, print it now uh, can can anyone tell me how to make this print h this h or let's not take that uh, let's start with k how to make it print k replace 0 by 1 in the input yeah yes. Yes. wait we yes. want to input only the second letter or the first two letters i just want k okay yeah Given me a k, so so what what is this doing essentially? Um, if it, if I gave it the zero, it printed a. If I gave it a one, it printed k. How how would we make it print s? Hello. Two. You have to put uh, two in input uh, square brackets two. Yes. So uh, if I one doubt is it only gives one character or can we give a range also using this function like one to two or something like that? Hmm. So uh, for that we have another function called uh, slice. We need, if you need a slice of thing index uh, so if i give it a slice like that it's giving one character now and i need two characters giving two characters make sense yeah so here in input slice if you were to put one and uh, three right Mm hmm what would say so one means it start with the uh, uh, k s y k s h okay let's verify that what happened Okay, so that's the range then. So it's taking between one and three. And yeah, so was, yeah. the second character doesn't seem to be the number of it's the index from starting from here till here. Yeah. So uh, how, how would we get KSH? So one, a comma four here. Makes sense. So uh, so this is essentially some uh, string based uh, uh, manipulation techniques that so this uh, this entire language is JavaScript, uh, which is essentially another programming language. Now le let me write uh, this particular thing here also. So for our demo, what we need is initials, right? So we have a word and we want to get the first letter. So what do we do? Uh, the first letter of that we took. And then uh, we want to return the first letter. Yeah. I'm going to save that. Let's see what's happening. So we have first letters are coming for uh, for only one word we are taking and we are getting one letter here at least, but now we need to add this middle name and last name, right? So how do we do that? Any thoughts? Add the other cell numbers. Okay, so I'm going to do A2, B2, C2 like that. Use the AND function. AND, B2, AND, C2 like that. 
Ya. ya. So what happened there? So demo only can take one input item, one variable. So when you did and it, it put it all together and send it as one word, right? We need separate. Uh, we need input one, input two, input three. In uh, we need three inputs. Correct. In so the... let's let's make it take input one, input two, input three. Now what? Now when you go back, you have to put a comma and separate them. Yes. So in we are we, instead of putting it as one word, we are going to say give it three parameters. Okay. The whole now, point being, if we put an and, everything will become one thing. So now we're giving three separate things, separated by a comma. So I think mm -hmm. it should uh, come as three separate things. Yes. Now here, anything else to do here? You can add a space between the inputs in the program okay. itself. For some reason, it didn't show an error. I don't know how it can not show an error. Because this is input to zero. Uh, space where? In, in the return. Well, right. You need to do the same thing for input one, input two, input three. You need to specify those uh, because you're manipulating that uh, variable. Yes. So I'm going to say like that. Sorry. Input two, two ka first letter. Input three ka first letter. Yeah. And now, now what? Now, in between the input one and input two and everything, just uh, you know, return a space. Return a space. Yeah. How to do that? Um. Return. You can probably give some. Uh, you can call some uh, variable called space. And then give in inverted commas and a space. Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, return return first letter, then return space, then return second letter, ret then return space, then return third letter. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. So this this one gave this. These are all showing error. Is this what you expected in G two? Did it match your expectation? Yes. Okay. So what's wrong here? the space I mean the this thing the commas have to be the instead of the end correct so I'll just copy this what's happened here it assumed there was a second input whereas in some cases there weren't second uh, there wasn't a second input some people didn't have middle names correct so um yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, I'm just going to take a pause here because we are at the end of our time. Um, we will probably continue this next session also. Uh, that's very true. So input two was an empty thing for Savanita. And we tried to get the first character, which is not defined at all. That's what it means by undefined. Uh, and then we are try to add uh, that. So uh, th this 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 entire thing is a function. Uh, space first letter input. These are all variables. Uh, 
these variables that we passed into a function have a few more names. They're also called arguments or parameters. Uh, let me write that down in the chat. Arguments, parameters. Uh, and uh, the fact that this is a text string and we used the idea of uh, you know slicing the string like this or making it upper uh, uppercase capital so in, in if say someone had returned their name like like uh, that which many people do then uh, we would have gotten something like that which we could have prevented by doing to uppercase so we can make things uppercase, lowercase, and things like that. I'm gonna save that. So you can see what happened there. So uh, we 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 have essentially just tried to look at these concepts of what a function is, what uh, variables are, um, and what's the third thing we learned? function input parameters or arguments and then the type of string type of a variable so this one is a string this one is a number those kinds of uh, uh, type so we, we we try to look at that through uh, problem solving and uh, we will possibly continue this next session there are a few more things i wanted to show uh, with these functions and then also some of these age gender, those kinds of things, how to handle that, uh, I wanted to show. We don't have enough time today. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we can probably talk for a five minutes about how you felt about all this uh, and what your thoughts about all this are. And then I'll say, let's break up. But Darren, you, you are the person who said in the chat that uh, uh, the concept of function, variable, all of that was kind of messed up during school. Uh, does it make a bit more sense now in the sense, uh, is it coming uh, intuitively for you now? Yeah, yeah, I, I do remember that <laughs> some of these things now, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anyone who has never seen a function or like never did programming till now who is there among the people here? If you have a comment. Uh, as in, so I, I have studied in state syllabus, so we never had any computer science class. And anything that I have done using Excel or R, right? It's not of not using any uh, code like this per se, it's already pre-built functions. So this was mm. this was useful and I was also thinking uh, in our, so at work, we have to like do something called as cleaning data, right? So before we start analyzing, we need to pre-code it. And that's mm. actually quite a mundane task that we do. So this is a very, I was thinking for me at in my workplace, this can uh, shorten our work all of mine and my colleagues work very quickly. I'm just thinking of using whatever you thought, right? Makes sense. So easier way to clean. Yes, thank you. So uh, uh, you now um, probably realize uh, how those pre-built, inbuilt functions are created, or how they are defined, and how uh, how easy or yeah. maybe sometimes complicated the the implementation of that functions can be. And then we also seen uh, in in Google Sheets itself, how we can, uh, you know, code our own functions. So, I mean, uh, all that I did, you can also do with Google Sheets. You can just go to extensions and add app script. You can add a new uh, this thing. So uh, imagine uh, some complicated uh, thing, for example, uh, <clears throat> Judas that day showing a Excel sheet where uh, Judah had to find out some score, right? 
So you would have a function for a score and then uh, you can take, uh, I don't know, 10 variables, uh, cast or uh, income, things like that. And then uh, you would do that multiplication here with some formula. It might make things slightly easier to express the, the logic behind what you're doing. Um, and then these pluses and uh, dots and brackets and numbers and all of that, th those are just what is called syntax. And uh, learning syntax is essentially very easy once we know the concept because we just have to search for how to do this particular thing in one particular language or something like that. So um, yeah, so I think that was what I wanted to kind of convey. Okay, so uh, two people did talk and it's five minutes past 10. So uh, we can officially call this uh, session over, uh, but I will continue to stay back. And uh, uh, if any of you are staying back, uh, we can have further discussions, but uh, otherwise feel free to leave. What does a logger do? Logger dot log. So uh, when I run it within uh, Google sh uh, within this app script, uh, if I want it to show in this execution log anything, then this logger is the one which will show. So which is the step of uh, step of debugging basically? Yes. So. I can actually just do. Can you just explain what log is again? Uh, Darren, you're saying something. I'm not able to hear you very well. Uh, is it okay now? Huh. He basically I, uh, asked us to explain logger again. He didn't understand. Yeah. So see, the logger just prints things into this execution log. Oh, got it. And uh, what about, uh, so, but then if you want to see the, uh, but if you want to run the command, then you should always put a logger to see what's happening. If we want to write anything in this execution log, we need logger.log. If we just want uh, the result, we, we saw this here, right? We didn't use any log. What is const? No, uh, yeah, I I was trying to avoid explaining that. Uh, but const is just way of saying I want to declare a new variable, and uh, I'm not going to change the value of it. It's going to be permanently that the constant variable <laughs> to uh, to. Huh? Can you make a variable without using const? In JavaScript. Uh, no, possibly not. In the sense, uh, let's try. I mean, if I do this, like this, right? Yeah. Um, it's not valid. Oh, it's Java. It might still work sometimes. Uh, is it still working? No, const is, is merely like we are calling into existence a data type. It's like. Uh, it's like, you know, God said, let there be light or whatever. So const is let there be a data type. And then we specify what kind of data type it is later. So all of these first letter, second letter, third letter, they're just uh, floating like that without any, uh, without anything to say that this is a data type. So. Yeah. So JavaScript is actually a very funny language. Uh, it, it even allows this to run which is obviously, I mean, here you can see that it's still working, but, uh, I mean, uh, just because it allows us to do some things we don't have to necessarily do. For example, if I were to write this as const like this, and by mistake, uh, I copy this line, uh, and, uh, change this like that. Okay. Uh, 
or let's say I'm not doing that. I'm doing one more. Uh, I want uh, to start one more uh, this thing. Uh, char character and uh, I by mistake uh, change this one I changed input 4 but I forgot to change the cons first letter okay now if I run this I'll save that see it says uh, it's a syntax error because the identifier first letter has already been declared in six line six so here i had already declared it and then i am reusing that here so it kind of detected that i'm doing that uh, error so those kinds of uh, thing uh, is what allows what this allows if i so had done well, const okay, running for the first time this one saves without an error okay. but if i yeah, put con uh, but what, what i is just wanted to interrupt here uh, akshay yes. yeah uh, can you share this google sheet uh, in the telegram group so we can see the formulas as well as uh, it? yeah i'll share it mm. let me know if um, the uh, app script is not visible. Uh, sure, sure. But... You you were saying something, Darren? I think you did it already right? because it's showing an error, right? Like what? If, oh no no no! Can you run it when you remove cons? Like how is the running output look like? Uh, no, like like. Yeah, like no, no. Have a double variable. Like let first letter be there twice. And then if you have. Ah, uh, once again. So firstly, does this work? It's already an error. Input okay. Input four. Where is input four? I removed it now. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't run. Rerun the. Uh, Also, actually, it's a while. function, or like what? What would you call it? Like, see, you you, you told us what arguments or parameters are, uh, but ha. const also be called as a function. Ha, so const is a keyword. It's not a function. It's a keyword. So function, for example, is a keyword. Okay, okay. Like two return. Ha, return and const and functional keywords. Uh, to uppercase is a method name. It's a method on strings. So for a string, you can have a method called to uppercase. Okay. But is, is there also some code behind to uppercase? Because it's like how you made function, like yeah. fu function demo. Technically, technically a method is a function, right? It's like a library function or something like that. Um, a method is a function. Correct. A method is a function defined in JavaScript itself. Within the, within the language, exactly. So yeah. So the the source code of that would be in the implementation of JavaScript, which means it would be in C or C plus plus inside your browser. In if you're using Firefox, it would be in the Firefox source code. Uh, or in Chrome, Chrome source code, um, V8 uh, JavaScript engine is called. Basically, uh, it makes things easier. Like the the longer way to do that would be to convert it to ASCII and then to, uh, uh, you know, like make 41, 61, and then get, give it back. Correct, exactly. So if you wanted to do uh, with uh, that, you would have to. Uh, add some 26 character uh, plus um, yeah, I think uh, there might be a different uh, implementation might be something like that possibly let's see uh, if I'm able to find the implementation I'll show uh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, so built in string to lower case. So uh, here, this is the part which does to uppercase. Can, can you see this? It is actually uh, calling uh, convert case string isolate, isolate runtime shade to upper mapping, something like that. So this to upper mapping probably is the mapping from A to capital A, B to capital B, C to capital C, something like that. So it's 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 written in another language at a different la layer of abstraction at a deeper level and it does uh, that conversion probably the same way uh, Judas guessing so does this mean like yeah like when you when you just said this I was just thinking uh, so does it mean that languages are built on one on top of the other and is there like mm -hmm. something that you can say that there's a low level and a higher level language Exactly. Yes. Okay. Correct. Uh, Juta, do you want to talk about what the lower levels would look like? I think obviously Akshay is uh, better equipped to answer this, but I'd like to give it a shot anyways. So see, the thing about anything to do with computers is fundamentally we are dealing with logic gates, right? At the level of uh, the circuits and uh, electricity passing through. So, <coughs> so the kind of information we are giving at that level will be different from the kind of information we are giving at a higher level. So when we are telling the individual logic gates to uh, to input a given function, to it will look very different from a programming language. So the whole point of a programming language is to make that, that uh, in-depth work a little bit easier. So uh, something like a high level programming language like Python wouldn't ask you to be very specific in uh, how, you're, how you are using the data. You can be like this plus this, that's it. But then Java would, you, would require you to use semicolons to execute the function you're using your syntax properly. And more so with uh, machine, the lowest level of code would be machine language where you have to be so specific at the level of the, uh, you know, level of the circuit or what would be the neuron for us. So the different levels of instruction. So assembly, le assembly is basically something like machine level uh, coding. So it would look like this. So this, this is apparently adding to uh, numbers. Uh, uh, I don't know which numbers it's adding. Yeah, so 14 and 10 it is trying to add. So move to A, EAX is A register, I suppose. 14 and then move to that 10 and then add this and this. And then I think it would push that result to A, EAX itself and then this will probably print it out or something like that. Yeah, calling printf and then printing it. So uh, even this is not, uh, if you notice, this is not electronics. This is still language. Uh, now the compiler would uh, uh, have to understand to convert this into electronics. I mean, into, yeah, into actual electricity. And that particular part, is taken care of by uh, which one would it be by the CPU that's the CPU's role um, and this is specifically written for specific CPU so if you have an Intel CPU of a different type or an AMD CPU of a different type these languages might be different for 
each other. But if you are using JavaScript, it'll work across different different uh, implementations. So yeah, it's all built on turtles all the way. Oh, thanks. That's a nice idea. I think for the most part of school, what was really perplexing to me and troublesome is how uh, you know the the uh, I, I would say the like how you guys spoke about the logic gates, right? Like how something like that, like something analog, is converted into something on a screen or, or into a function. So that was something that, uh, I mean, maybe yeah, it, it seems nice to talk about it like this, but somehow I felt like I was too obsessed with that, that I just couldn't grasp other things or I don't know if, you know, if there wasn't a satisfactory explanation given to me back then. Yeah, you should Basically real complexity. Being... Huh? You know, like uh, people just shout the complexity, like they don't show the entire beauty of all of the steps. We like the whole computer functioning is just you know hidden behind, uh, like you know the opaque, opaque uh, boards that we don't uh, we don't see what's going on. Hmm. So this course NAND to Tetris is really uh, recommended for you, Darren, because. Um, um, I mean, I was also uh, interested in that particular question, and then um, this one completely made it uh, uh, not magic anymore uh, because it, it takes you through each step without skipping any any step. It takes you through all of them, and uh, uh, eventually it's all abstractions. So you build, uh, uh, you take just one NAND gate, and then you can build OR and MUX and 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 with just NAND gate. And then now you have or and and, so you don't need to just use NAND. You can use NAND or 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 and. And now when you when you put these together, you can build something bigger. You can build memory. You can build computation. So adding two numbers, you can uh, get done with one or these two. So now you have a uh, max uh, uh, something called uh, what is it called? Uh, I forget the terminology. Uh, yeah, but basically now you have an abstraction where you have add, subtract, multiply. And now when you have add, subtract, and multiply, then you can do some other stuff with that. So you basically build it above and above and above and above. Uh, yeah, somewhere memory comes in. Once the memory comes in uh, with a register, uh, and uh, uh, then with memory, you have the ability to store strings or store data and then work on that stored work function. So once, uh, and then to store stuff, we, we looked at encoding. So binary, uh, how to store letters or numbers or anything in binary. So from there, it's just a matter of building higher and higher abstractions. Um, so uh, uh, in the next week, for example, I was going to show how to compose a few functions. So I could have, something like first letter, uh, take an input of it, and then uh, return the first letter, uh, like that. And then I could also have um, uh, split input, and then this one will do uh, input or split by a space. And then I could do capitalize input, and then this would do return input dot to uppercase. And now what I can do is uh, function uh, get initials of uh, one, two, or let, let's just say input, and then I'm going to say split parts is equal to split of input and then uh, first letters is equal to split parts but map uh, part first letter part and then I'm going to say uh, capitalize 
actually let's do that here map capitalize b and zero to on just that was so basically using chart. functions to call other functions yes so now i have a function called get initials and uh, uh, i could call it get initials and i'll pass this b2 okay it has uh, some error uh, yeah so the i'm not prepared for this today so it will come out like that but essentially um, we would be able to now call everything with get initials right uh, and then get initials has all the logic of uh, these these th three four logics so this is an abstraction now get initials has become a, a layer of abstraction where i don't have to worry about how it works i just have to start working with this now i might have another uh, abstraction called convert uh, text to picture and then here i would pass the initials that i got from this one now how how does this work i don't care uh, as long as this function does what it is supposed to tell which is it'll take an initial like asd and return an image that looks like asd and now uh, now i suddenly have uh, the functionality that telegram has wherein uh, I can set this as a profile picture. So I might have something like set profile picture to this picture. So let's say picture is equal to that. So this, this is how. Uh, yeah. Basically, you're saying that once you want something, it's possible to kind of break it down into small steps and solve each small step separately. And make a big program to compile everything together. Correct. Correct. So that's the that's what is an abstraction. That's what is called an abstraction. And everything in programming is built on abstraction over abstraction. So someone else would have written a lower layer of it, and we build the next level of it. So is there like? Would you say there's a lot of uh, I mean, does knowing the lower level stuff have any relationship or it, this doesn't have to be approached in some sort of, a, you know, from an atom to a big thing sort of way? Um, I have uh, personally found that uh, knowing the lower levels is optional. So the NAND to Tetris course, I took only in 2021 or so. By then, I had been already programming for many years. So uh, the option of it doesn't uh, drastically change um, the way you think about programming. Uh, but uh, the immediate lower level. So if you are working in uh, Google Sheets and you know the immediate lower level, how it is implemented, that is useful or say uh, like Savanita was saying R has some pre-built functions the immediate lower level of that would be the source code of those functions and knowing that would help you build similar functions with different functionality so that is always helpful but if it is many layers lower even uh, one layer separated lower it's not very useful Got it. so, so, about so the area of complexity Hmm. So, so this huh? is something that I can also apply on Notion, right? Because Notion also allows for like some playing around. Notion is one website I have never used uh, a lot because, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never got the idea of why we should use an internet based service for doing all that. But uh, Notion does have an API. Notion does have an API that you can fit yeah. it on with. Correct. So um, once you uh, basically the API allows you to automate some of the interactions that you have with that uh, yeah. service. Do you do you have any other recommendations for a good project manager? Like the reason why I wanted Notion was just to sort of have this sort of 
like a project management system for things that are going on in my course uh, life and stuff. Yeah, I mean, Notion is uh, basically Notion is what you make out of it, right? I mean, that's my notion of what Notion does. Yeah. Uh, you can use it as project manager. You can use it as a to-do list. You can use it as a table. You can use it as anything. Yeah, the flexibility was what I was drawn to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, uh, exactly that kind of flexibility. Uh, the kind of tools that give that are things like Emacs has something called Org Mode. Uh, or I think uh, something called ROM Research. Ah, yeah. Um, Check out ROM, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I don't, I'm not a big fan of these things either because uh, I spend a lot of time in configuring these and it doesn't give me the output I'm looking for. I mean, productivity boost that I'm looking for. So. Do you use some app for productivity? Something that you can suggest? No, uh, so yeah, my workflow is totally different. I, I only use to-do lists. Uh, I have uh, different to-do list apps, uh, which I keep using and calendar. Uh, so time blocking and uh, checklist. That's all I do. So that's how it works for you. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All right, Akshay. So okay. Uh, Fine then. Uh, thank you. See you next week. Okay. Next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, Akshay. Bye, Dan. Bye. Bye, Tooth.